The only difference between him and them? They're in there and he's out here. And he plays the flute. This is Tucker. He's a lean, mean, grubby love machine, and I wish I'd never known him. I'm Justin. Just wear a leather jacket and punch some guys. Everything else will work itself out. I'm Sam, and this is 1977's Bare Knuckles on Stinker Madness. Hello, welcome to Stinker Madness, the podcast about bad movies for bad movie lovers by bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin, with me as always, the Micro Machine Man. This is a super fast talker. It's super hot outside. We haven't done this podcast in a really long time, and I don't even know how it works anymore. And go. Wait, was that me or Because uh, I'm usually here. He's here sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, this is the first time uh, we've had a three-way on this. Any chance at a three-way? Yes, there is. Uh-huh. We're doing it. We should also inform the fans that we did not test this at all. It just sort of worked. Yay! <laughs> It's interesting, you know, like, what happened to Skype? Because it, in today's modern society, you hear about the peoples that are going to the works, which, you know, none of us are really good at. Um, but they all use Zoom. Like, why was it? Where did Skype get off of the, like, we're the premier video streaming, casting, talking thingy dingy? I guess they didn't charge for it, so nobody took oh. it seriously. <laughs> oh. That must be it. I love it. So, like, <laughs> if if Dollar Tree increased it to five Dollar Tree, like they'd get a classy group of people there. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what it would, it would be. The difference between the people that uh, shop at Target versus Walmart. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, mm. it would be the Target of dollar stores. The five dollar <laughs> store. <laughs> the one hundred dollar <laughs> store. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Five. What is this, Beverly Hills? <laughs> yes, Rodeo uh, Drive of dollar stores. I don't. I don't know if anybody pay a hundred dollars for a single pack of gum, <laughs> so it might not work. Yeah, some things you can do better at the grocery. You know. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, 1977's Bare Knuckles, starring nobody. I don't think. Um, first off, I want to preface this to uh, make sure that nobody gets confused why we're saying 1977's. Is there's 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 like several of these. There's a 2010, and I think there's a 2018 Bare Knuckles. Has anybody oh. done anything with either of those two? No. Okay. No. All right. All right. Well, then we can't really say if you should bother with them or not. Uh, but either ways, this is uh, currently streaming on YouTube. Sam found a copy that was pretty good. Or you can pay two bucks on Amazon Prime to rent it. But uh, I'll turn it I over to you, Sam. did the test run to just watch, and it seems to be the same exact version on YouTube. It might be a little crisper. It was like a VHS hmm. transfer, but the, I actually paid for the Amazon to make sure and... It was indiscernible, the differences, so you don't really have to pay for it if you don't want to. Yeah, that's good news. Oh, because I did not know that. Yeah, I, I wish <laughs> it didn't even occur to me to look on YouTube for some reason. I just I took the horse's mouth, the horse mouth's word yeah. for it, however that would go. Exactly. Uh, and rented it as well. And it's I... exactly how it goes. <laughs> it's... I took the horse mouth's word for yeah, it. It's, it's in the uh, Urban <laughs> Dictionary right there. Uh, yeah. this, this was John Elway's pick. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, okay, it looks Sam, like a horse. What he a, does. <laughs> he does. What 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 can you tell us about Bare Knuckles? Well, it was directed by Don Edmonds, and you may know that name because he did Ilsa She Wolf of the SS in the sequel, mm -hmm. the uh oil chic thing, and those are fairly yeah. popular cult films. Mm-hmm. He also did a movie, another movie with John Daniels, who's in this, in the uh, the nurse cycle that was so big in the Corman right. studio. Naughty Nurses, um, Hot Nurses 2, Nurses Go to High School. The one he did was Tender Loving Care, and he also, before that, his first movie uh, was called Wild Honey, and it's one of those that probably could have played in porn theaters or regular theaters, but okay. probably porn theaters, even though it doesn't really look like it's actually porn. But it's close enough. There's enough nudity in 1972. It's playing that. It's exploitation. It seems like he really just made exploitation films. They're almost all worth checking out, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. He was an actor for before and after, but he doesn't really have like a huge credit list. It's like 29 or 30, something like that. But as I said, the Ilsa movies in this, uh, Tucker, you'd seen this before, right? 
You know, I don't know. Like you had to have. I thought. I mean, were you still in Jeff were talking about it, and Jeff said, uh, "He's like, I remember us us watching this, or at least you know, back in the bad movie day days, we watched it. I was like, maybe I wasn't there, maybe I've just forgotten all about it, but it felt all new to me. I think you might have been in Nebraska the year that we did this. Oh, Nebraska, sure." Was that where you were, Nebraska? No. Where no. were you? Passed through there, though. <laughs> I was in Ohio <laughs> and then West Virginia. but Mountain Mama. But yeah, I, I went through oh, Nebraska. And if you've ever been through Nebraska, it does feel like you live there by the time you get out of it. Because <laughs> it's fucking endless and awful and flat. And How long have we been here? Oh, Ten John, God. John Denver was full of shit, man. Right. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Yeah, that's two John Denver uh, references within the span of two minutes. Uh, let's wow. just do one every minute. This will be the John Wait. Denver Minute podcast. John Denver and John Elway are the same guy? No, no, no. I'm uh, pretty sure said, they're not. He said West Virginia. I said Mountain Mama. Oh, all right. Taking home, that? Country Roads. Ah. Okay. What else you got? John Denver. Uh, his last film was... And you got John Elway, <laughs> Denver Broncos. John, John, Den- John Denver. John Denver Broncos. It's everywhere. Oh He's John Denver Broncos. The same man. <laughs> <laughs> Very he also similar did lifestyle. Night, he also did Night Stalker with Robert Zadar and Charles Napier and a John bunch of other Denver people. John Denver was in that? Yes, John Denver was in Night Stalker. <laughs> oh, God, I got to watch that again. <laughs> He's the guy that's always standing in the corner going, what's happening when someone gets stabbed? <laughs> All right, I'll move on. Uh, go ahead. Uh, he didn't get any permits for this in L.A. He just... Shot mm-hmm. it. Apparently, yeah. they spent fifty thousand, which means that half of it was just film. Okay, so let me let me stop you there. Normally, when you say that they didn't get permits, that's fine. You've got some back alley fighting, and uh, you know maybe <laughs> maybe a driving sequence or two. The penultimate scene of this movie ends up in the river. How do you shoot in the river without anybody noticing? I'm not Fast. real sure. <laughs> they shot in a lot of places that are highly visible. And how about that? The car chase. Yeah. The car chasing the motorcycle. There's like, and it goes over that uh, lawn. And so I was thinking about it at the time because the car that passes in front of them, I was like, I don't think they know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. Like, this is just yeah. on the sly. I don't know how they didn't get arrested. I don't even know how they begged for forgiveness afterwards. Yeah. The soundtrack <laughs> ends up going to a. Uh, Tom Selleck movie that's made the same year and that may be like some of the penance that was paid was like, all right, well, we're taking the soundtrack and putting it in a Tom Selleck movie because it's it it is totally badass. Yeah, that's that's worth the price of cleaning up your exploded car mess that's in our goddamn river. They (laughs) blew it up in the storm (laughs) drain. Yeah. Weird. And it's a GTO. <laughs> it's not going to be easy to clean up. No, no, that's insane oh, that this man. didn't have permits. I mean, it's not like the French Connection didn't have permits either when they shot. And a very similar uh, uh, driving sequence, lots of running into random people that are just going to get groceries. But they didn't blow up a car in the goddamn river. I mean, th- it's no. insane. Like, that's bonkers to me. <laughs> Speaking of how you shoot without permits, the Maverick Club, or wait, no, that's not the Maverick Club. What's it called? The Maverick's mile, Flat. The Mile High Club, where mm. John Elway played. John mm-hmm. Elway's in the Mile High Club? Yeah. John Denver Broncos. <laughs> he played in the Mile High Club Stadium. Mile High Club Stadium is what it's called. <laughs> this is so dumb. It's sponsored by people that fucking planes. <laughs> <laughs> well now we can fucking space you got uh, the richard branson shooting up the the rockets and the planes that people can ride on and have sex in space for millions of dollars i don't even know what version of the dollar store that is <laughs> like, as far as mile high clubbing goes i think it's the 10 million dollar store <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's way out of my budget. <laughs> I guarantee you Richard Branson right now is up in space, not on camera, either jerking off or boning some lady. I promise mm-hmm. you. Looking at floating orbs of semen going, well, gravity is really going to create a mess when we get back into the atmosphere. <laughs> well, I've done it. I've reached the pinnacle of humanity. <laughs> I guess I'll pull this <laughs> the thing out. most amazing person alive. <laughs> What will I jerk off to next? <laughs> Pictures of myself. I, I waste. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you know, we, uh, we, we, all the valuable research Richard Branson's <laughs> doing in space. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like they shot a lot of the alley stuff around John Daniel's club. Uh, he is, of course, Black Shampoo and the Candy Tangerine mm-hmm. Man. Mm-hmm. And though he didn't have the most illustrious film career, those are very popular. And then he owned the club for a long time. I guess somebody bought it and they're going to reopen it as the uh, Mavericks flat and kind of put it back to where he had it. The Temptations actually were the first um, first act that ever played there, and it kind of got the nickname the West Coast Apollo because of it. It was a real swinging scene, I guess. What, what town was this in? L.A. Well, I mean, like L.A., L.A., or like Glendale? I'm not sure if it's downtown or what. Okay. Hmm. Be interesting. Yeah. Uh, Robert Vaharo is the star of this. Okay. He looks like he's in a lot of stuff, but I just can't tell you who the hell he, he is. Mm. He looks familiar to me. Like, he looks sure. like William Smith. God rest his soul just died yesterday or two mm. days ago as the yeah. podcast will air. Uh, that's like, even the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, bitch, and William Smith and Robert Roman's like, no, that is, that is Robert <laughs> Vaharo. No, no, no. I was like, who's oh. that? And he's like, I I don't know. He seems like he's in a lot of stuff, but I just don't know who right. he is. Yeah. The man's an enigma. Sherry Jackson is, of course, from the Danny Thomas show and sort of tried it out as a sex symbol. She would po- she hmm. would go nude, though it left it made it onto the cutting room floor uh, in the Bummer. cinematic version of the gun film. However, the international version kept the nude scenes and then Playboy bought stills and ran it there. So if you want to look at Sherry Jackson naked, you can. I will. Let's keep that in uh, mind. (laughs) You may remember Sherry Jackson because she's in an episode of fucking everything. But specifically, I think the hottest episode of the original Star Trek, which is what uh, what little girls are made of. Hmm. Oh. The one without Bones and Spock where she like tries to seduce uh, William Shatner in the multicolored X that only barely covers her boobs. Yes. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's Sherry Jackson. You're like, oh, yeah, hot stuff. Yeah, how about that? Right. I'm surprised she didn't end up on something like Dynasty because this is like, this is 77, right? I mean, she's not, you know... 19 anymore but she definitely could be one of those hot ladies on dallas or dynasty or knots landing or mm-hmm. one of those drama shows she was a, the hot lady in an episode of every one of the uh magnum simon and simon all that mm-hmm. stuff like they were like oh we need some hot bikini lady for a whole episode of magnum sherry jackson come on over okay mm-hmm. um and then she married a super rich guy who died in a plane crash and then was just like peace out <laughs> Oh, man. That's the dream, right? Plane crash. Yeah. (laughs) You mean happiest accident. (laughs) (laughs) I find her research most notable because I have mentioned that she is a front runner on the time machine hit list. Yeah. To the point that basically right now, as of right now, she's number one until I see Terry Gar in something and then she'll take Whoa, her spot back. That is high Wait praise. Wait what? No, that's what happens is I watch a pre-77 Terry Gar appearance and I'm like, number one! And then I see Sherry Jackson and I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure she's number one. That- oh, this is your, your time machine back to do the business with her? <laughs> yeah. That's what you're saying? To, okay. To yes. duper. Speaking of Richard Branson and his... Mine is Bernadette Peters and the Jerk. Oh, that's Period. A good one. That's End a of good story. One, yeah. Number one, number ten, number all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it ten times. That's right. Travel back in time. Where each next? Time. Uh, just go back. <laughs> to the week before. <laughs> Uh, Her last movie is probably going to end up on the show at some point because she's in it one, so I'll probably have to pick it. But it's also a Christopher Mitchell movie. What if I kept going back and joining myself? (laughs) And there's like 10 of me and one of her. (laughs) Do you think Bernadette Peters would like that? I don't know. She seemed like she uh, was up for a good time. I don't know. I I can imagine it being alarming for sure. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's worth a shot though 
I mean, if I get to go back and somehow convince her to do this you do in it. the first place, you got to try with two of you. You do it once. She's she's like, <laughs> okay, maybe he's got a twin. The third one, she's starting to get some mm-hmm. questions. By number 10, she wants to get the hell away from you <laughs> because you're clearly yeah. Satan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's ten. my angle on the scumbag time machine business is I just show them the smartphone and they obviously know that I'm the future man and I'm like, uh, the future of mankind rests on me banging you and if they don't go for it, then I show them the Terminator. And <laughs> mm, mm. Which is what he calls That's a penis. good idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I think Bernadette Peters, if you use the same scumbag the ploy I was going to use, would get confused like, why do I have to get gang banged by you? <laughs> Trust it's me. Future thing. Future thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can we get to a movie at some point? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, Sam. Anyway, so she's in Stingray you. with Chris Mitchum. Is her last movie. She does some television appearances before that. Um, also, Gloria Hendry, who plays the singer in this movie, was the first African American okay. to get banged by James Bond. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are in this that like. Make it out and do things, and you're like, "How did you get in this?" Right, right. Hmm. Yeah, what's that movie? Um, with Jim Van uh, uh, Peebers, Jim Van uh, Dead by Van Daylight, Van. or not? The- Dead Beat at Dawn. Dead, Dead Beat, Beat at, at Dawn. Dawn. Um, yeah. This is a very similar movie to that, as far as the look and feel and the talent that's in it. Mm. But nobody got out of that. Speaking of people who got out of it, Dean Cundley, the guy who shot it, hey, will end up doing. Carpenter Everything. movies and mm-hmm. all sorts of good shit, but like Deborah all Hill, the back to the futures. Deborah Hill was on yeah. this as a crew member too, and she's his longtime Script producer, supervisor. And yeah. uh, Buck Flower was on the crew, and he ends up really? like so. Yeah. There's like a, a chunk of people that actually worked on this, and I, I think for fifty thousand, this thing turned out pretty good. Yeah. Um, that the like Carpenter's it like was, oh, it was come better with me. than what I was expecting, like just quality wise. Honestly, yeah, was like, there was this a few. Is gonna be like, it, 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 there was a I few did just shots. catch up with Dangerous Men, though, so maybe I was in that mindset, right? There was a few well, shots that were shot in the dark and you couldn't tell what the heck was going on, and maybe that's the VHS transfer or not. But I was like, yeah. uh, I does, does he have a knife? I don't know what he's doing in this scene. Well, we all watched the Amazon version, which was a projection transfer because you oh. can see the burns. Okay. And yeah. so that's mm-hmm. what it looked like. Mm-hmm. The only way to sort of maybe get anything out of those would be to give this the Blu ray treatment. And I just don't know that that's going to happen. Probably not. You never know. All right. You got anything else, Amy? No, the, the, uh, Dean Cunley, Deborah Hill was the most interesting thing that those two heavyweights were on this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing. I've been doing a uh, John Carpenter podcast called Chew Bubblegum and Kick Ass. So when I saw that, I was like, "Hot damn! <laughs> it's Buck Flower and Deborah hey, Hill." And, I got and something Cundy. to talk it about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it, what? It's free what? research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. So next, you, you go in. You sound smart because you've got all these connections, and it was just because you accidentally fall, fell into a movie. On another yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, you know something else that I know? <laughs> <laughs> They'll be very impressed with me. <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> no, no, they won't. <laughs> okay. They're like, oh, great, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into this, guys. Uh, Bare Knuckles from 1977. Uh it starts out with, well, at least the title is appropriately uh, made because this is a Bare Knuckles fight. It's the first thing we get. I thought we got like yeah. him driving in the bitchin' music, and oh, then he's the music just is first beating a guy up. Slightly more than that guy is beating him up. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, which is a recurring theme throughout this whole this whole film. Like <laughs> he has an air of like I am the ultimate tough guy, but then yeah. the action scenes states something completely different than what you're being told by the character. (laughs) And they kick each other just as much as they bare knuckle each other, for sure. Yeah, this is a... It's just crappy street fighting, they should call it. (laughs) (laughs) Not quite the same title. (laughs) No. I don't know if it's going to... This in crappy street fighting? (laughs) Isn't that an Eli Roth film? (laughs) Um, yeah, so what he is, what our, what our, what our man is, his name is Zachary Kane, 
and he mm. is not really a bounty hunter in the traditional sense of like a a, a, a hunting down bond jumpers. He's Skip a chip tracer. Yeah, he well, he's a he seems more like a vigilante to me because this guy's wanted for crimes. He goes to jail after he gets beat up, and the cops are like. Good to see you again, Zachary Cain. You know, you're a regular around here. And then the whole plot of the movie isn't about being a bounty hunter. It's being a vigilante. Yeah, he is freelancing. Mm -hmm. uh, they even say, yeah. like, well, we can't give you the reward until you fill out this citizen's arrest form. So you aren't really <laughs> even a bounty hunter. Yeah. You're beating people up and taking them in under citizen's arrest. Now, I'm not an attorney, right. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when he gets the main job of the movie, he gets it from the newspaper. Yeah. He's like, oh, they're offering a reward. I'm going to go investigate. <laughs> and and it does feel like, I mean, until it becomes personal, I, I feel like he is going to collect the bounty. But then at the end, I'm not so sure he's going to. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think he's That's, got some We have to wait for that. Yeah. Because yeah, it yeah. seems like you got to bring him in alive. But they, the first time I saw this, I was really confused. I was like, how does this guy actually make any money? But the second time through, I'm like, okay, these are all 1,500 bounties. This is 1977. 15, he's actually thousand. making some. He's making some. Well, that guy was, but the other one that he just brought in was 1,500 bucks. Oh, okay. Okay. But that's, it's a couple months rent money. anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. At least. Um, What's the difference between a vigilante and somebody who just goes and says, citizens arrest? Like, where's that well, line? I feel like this guy has crossed it heavily and that he should be arrested as well. I but feel like vigilantes like mete out punishment. Whereas if someone's just saying citizens arrest and trying to detain someone for the police without abusing them or hurting them. That might be the line. So it's the like I think vigilantes are out to get some justice. So the instant you, you know, punch a guy in the face, you become a vigilante, unless you fill out the paperwork afterwards, which Batman does not do. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know. What about the people that caught Richard Ramirez? You know, right? Like that whole neighborhood of people chased him down, and they they hit him a bunch, but they you know they kept him for the cops. Like, is that a vigilante mob, or is that just some yeah, I don't know what citizens arrest in a heightened situation? <laughs> Did they fill out the paperwork? Exactly. It <laughs> seems like something that's kind of important, and society might want to have some clear, like, laws that we should all know about. Like, there shouldn't necessarily be a yeah. gray area in this, because the end, you end up with stuff like Trevor Martin. Uh, and so I think maybe we should like pin down what a vigilante is and the, uh, how far you can go with mm. the citizen's arrest before you're a terrible human being. Yeah. In the film, they state like, there's really no difference between you and the shit that you drag in here. Right. right. Yeah. He says, the difference is I'm out here and there and there. Oh my God. His one liners throughout this whole movie. <laughs> I mean, this is like this, this script is <laughs> seriously written by Robert Hamburger as far as it's like awesome tough guy lines. And oh I'm, yeah. I'm I've written <laughs> yeah, I've great. got so many quotes in here it's ridiculous. <laughs> but that was a good one. Um I also like the chief in this scene because he is like he's at an eleven on on the, the perp that is oh, brought yeah. in. So he's going to leave. He goes home to his studio apartment and there's a guy outside that I guess lives there or something. I and he like shares a beer with him because beer sharing in movies is like a thing. You like, think oh, that this is a, a an apartment? This looks like a textile factory that he lives in. And that guy's working there. He's making stuff. He looked like the guy in Ace Ventura that you had to give the New England camp clam chowder password to. Mm, right, right, like, right. He's got a weird tinkering mm. shop, and he rents out the studio, which used to be a closet. <laughs> to tough guys. And there's a tough guy <laughs> studio that has a bed, a shelf with some persons of interest, and a punching bag. <laughs> yeah. Right. Those yeah. are the amenities in his studio apartment. <sighs> And he crosses off the wanted posters as he takes care of business. Just get a. He should just take them down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or maybe the, he's like, uh, what are those things called? Uh, a shrine. Like he's 
mm-hmm. sort of bonkers himself. Like, again, you're just as bad as these guys. Maybe this is yeah. his way of – he's Dexter. This is his uh, – the way right. to get rid of his dark passenger. Now, does it ever say that his – like, his whole thing is that he brings people in with his bare hands? Like, is there a reason he doesn't use a weapon or anything <laughs> so. to apprehend these people that he has to fist fight them? The only thing it seems really inefficient to me. <laughs> that you get, and it's right before, because the next sequence is his training right. that he does. In, oh my god! That he does in jeans <laughs> and almost a jeans and a long sleeve yeah. shirt. He's yeah. running in, in L.A. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> and during that, uh, and playing the flute. <laughs> During that montage, not at the same time, but in the montage, there's a there's a poster of a main event where he was he used to be a boxer. Oh, I yeah. Missed that. So that's the only like reason why you know he's bare knuckle bounty hunter Zach Kane. He does carry a derringer just in case. Oh yeah, yeah. the little two shot. He has a certain set of skills. <laughs> yeah, the flute. What is the deal with the flute? <laughs> It's only that one shot, right? right? Does he ever have the flute again? He never has the flute yeah. again. <laughs> I love it. Do you, have, you, have you guys ever played the flute? Uh, I tried I a so. couple times. It's not very easy. Did you when you when you tried to do it? Was your body naturally telling you I have to be in a stupid pose to play this thing? Like one leg <laughs> or leaning over in a cross leg situation? Mm. Like he is? Is that just what you have to do when you have a flute and you're like, check me out? I'm posing stupidly to play this thing. Well, you yeah, have to blow on point. it like it's a bottle to get the sound, but then also like hold it up. So yes, the answer is yes. You okay. have to look stupid yeah. playing the flute. It's not it Jethro just Tull's naturally fault. put your body in that position. Yeah. yeah. He, <laughs> if you do that with your face and your arms, your body will follow. You just try it. <laughs> Go get a flute and give it a shot. You'll see. <laughs> it's just evolution's way of saying, hey, you got to be like Pan. Right. Goat boy. <laughs> You'll notice that it just does not make sound until you do it. <laughs> so you put your leg up. <laughs> oh, there it is. Beautiful. <laughs> You're kind of like asking if you if you can look badass playing a harp. <laughs> right. I don't right. think you can. <laughs> Do you have to take it between your legs like this? I find it emasculating. <laughs> you can always like contort and play it behind your head. Okay, so after his montage, he goes out for some dinner, which is, you know, a guy living in a the back of a textile factory he's only got one option for food that he can ever eat and that's pizza hut so outside the <laughs> pizza hut that's right. a lot of questions about this pizza hut okay we first meet sherry jackson who's brought here by an obviously rich man mm-hmm. in a cadillac mm-hmm. and she's a bit of a socialite as we find out later why is he taking her to pizza hut are we too young his name's roger was pizza hut like sort of an upscale like before in the before time because i remember also like during the 80s but also i was a child but i remember like yeah. when you were going to pizza hut you were doing something special that's true that was like a once every three months visit for me as a child right like pizza hut was a very special night right but that is yeah. that just because we were stupid and kids and our parents were like, these dumb kids, they don't know what garbage they're eating. And I'm only paying 10 bucks for this pie. Or was it actually like in the, maybe in the 70s, even a little classier? I think this guy shouldn't be taking Sherry Jackson to Pizza Hut because. Because Zachary Kane walks out of it with a bag of pizza. Right. He doesn't even have a box. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> How does one go about eating a bag was, of pizza? Just fish in there and hope you get some? Um, as the movie tells us later, you find a pretty lady and then you share it with her on your car. <laughs> yeah. That's how life works. I have, like, as soon as the guy that brought her to Pizza Hut, his name is Roger. Mm-hmm. And, like, I know that because I wrote it down 
because I didn't know who he was or if he was going to be a character right. or right. what. But I was immediately like, this guy's hilarious because <laughs> he's, he's over emotive and he's got a mustache and he's very 70s looking and he's just funny. And he says he says things like very funny. Like, that's how well, he he's talked. upper crust. <laughs> he was. Yeah. Upper- He's stuffed He's crust. Stuffed crust. I, they didn't have a stuffed crust. That's what I call it. <laughs> stuffed no, shirt yet. crust. This is pre, pre-stuffed pre crust. Gives me some ideas on the stuffed time machine hit crust. list, though. Like, look, in the future, they put cheese in here. <laughs> Can you believe it? Mm. <laughs> oh, you... Man, imagine... No, that's too... You took a lady in 1977 to Pizza Hut and told her about future pizza? Yeah, you don't, you, that's too much, Sam. You don't want her finishing early. <laughs> that's true to see that pizza just, and be like <laughs> becoming terrified of the grim future that is is bagless pizza <laughs> i just opened up a bagless pizza restaurant what am i supposed to do with this stuff crust <laughs> boxes what is this space <laughs> Uh, okay, all right. So uh, he, Ro- or, yeah, Roger is, I guess, being kind of a dick. Uh, like, get back here, Jennifer. And she's like, no, I've had enough yeah. of your stuff, whatever our, their beef is. And I'm going to go enjoy some Pizza Hut by myself, some bagged pizza. And so uh, uh, our boy Zach sees all this and he's like, I'm going to, I like this opportunity. So he steps in between the two and uh, Roger's like, I don't want anything to do with you, sir. I'm going home. Also, he says, he says, cool down. Yeah. yeah. He tells him to cool down. And he does. He leaves. What is going on with Zach Kane's shirt in this scene? Hmm. Did you see? It was like a... I don't remember. An Aztec rug. <laughs> oh, I missed that. <laughs> it's wild. Hmm. <laughs> so she's like, walks off. She's going to walk home or walk wherever, but it's the middle of the night. And she's like, um, this is LA in the 70s, hard pass. I better turn around and get a ride from that guy because I don't have a purse. I don't have yeah. a cell phone. They don't even have those. If somebody showed up with a cell phone, I'd be like, bang me so we can save the world. Hi, Sam. Uh, but <laughs> for right now, I've got bagged pizza boy back there. That's my only, that's my best shot. <laughs> He's probably going to also rape me, but at least I got a chance. Yeah. And she was going right. to Pizza Hut to begin with, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. why not? When in Rome, right? Yeah. And he shares it all sexy like. It's very erotic pizza eating on top of a car. And she goes home yeah. with him. He pulls it out of a bag and hands her a slice. They don't, he doesn't drive her back to her place, which is pretty nice that we find out later in the movie. She goes back to his textile factory studio and has some d- dingy <laughs> sex. Next, yeah. next to a soiled punching bag. Right. When, <laughs> when, when she tells, he tells her his name and she says, he says, Kane. And she says, Kane as in Abel, as in citizen. And he says, as in blinds man, blind man. Yeah, that took me a minute. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Dude, what? She's, that, what she said was cool. What you said was pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good one, Zach. <laughs> like, um, Smooth. Please clarify. And he's like, I try to be helpful. <laughs> I'm a good I'm a good friend to lean on. That's what I'm saying. You can poke me around. Hence the pizza and the ride and stuff. Oh, come on. After that, she's like, <laughs> What do you do? And he goes, The best I can. That was probably my favorite. <laughs> it's so melodramatic. Like, all of the dialogue is just like, oh, shut up. Both, everybody in this movie, your life is not that important. (laughs) You don't need to talk like this. Uh, Elsewhere, there's this uh, lady, and I guess she was doing some traveling. Mm. It looks like she got off the bus or something, and she's walking down the street with suitcases. It's the middle of the night in L.A. She didn't didn't hear about the guys outside of the pizza huts that you can get rides from. Uh, So she just... uh, you know the new girl in town looking for uh, looking for a big break, and her big break is getting murdered in front of some <laughs> people that just are only moderately amused by it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it's weird. Well, first of all, when she's like being stalked, mm-hmm. 
and she knows something's up. She's feeling weird, and she's kind of running. And when we finally see the killer, like his silhouette in the, in the uh, alleyway, he goes, <laughs> like, "This is <laughs> it's really." fucking stupid it's so good and then uh and yeah i had written down like um when he's he attacks her he's stabbing her in the street and the first guy that sees him sees her is shirtless with a dog collar on (laughs) and he just looks like it cuts back to him at the end of it and he's kind of like oddly like it looks like he's almost getting off on which is weird and then the next guy they show is a fat slob drinking a Mm -hmm. beer like looking out his window, watching it, and then we see Barbara, but uh, which is the I I don't know what happened to all of them. Like I feel like I fell asleep or something for five minutes and missed something, but it felt like they were characters. Her and Deke, right. yeah, Deke is just not in the movie after this. She's like, it's so weird. She's like, I, I set up, people. I can't take this anymore, and he's like, oh, let it alone, Barbara. Yeah, it's, it's a just fucking murder outside. Brutal murder. <laughs> and it's not on e- the street. It's not even just that. It's that Barbara knows this guy. She's seen him before and she's like, this yeah. cat man, I've seen him. And and Catman looks up and sees her. He knows who she is and that he yeah. she knows who he is. And so like this is a problem for Barbara. And Zeke's like, eh, let's go back to the game. <laughs> Well, they got a show that night, and he's like, what is going to happen when you show up to the club and you can't sing? Well, that will happen if I get murdered. Yeah. (laughs) Every night, that will happen if I get murdered. Prohibitive to singing. (laughs) Until they catch on and stop booking us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they could do a whole weekend at Bernie's gig, you know. <laughs> That's all. just have the playback going and their <laughs> strings. She's got mic stand. She's taped too. Yeah, she's got a Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> she looks like uh, duct tape to her play nice. the tape. What's his name? She 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 looked yeah. like Dion Warwick. Oh, <laughs> she she <laughs> she looked like the lead singer in that uh, at, at that band in Jabba's yeah. Palace. Mm-hmm. Or the lead singer of Aerosmith. <laughs> okay, um, so she she's leaving town uh, until this the cat man gets locked up, but uh, that's never going to happen. So Kane then sees about the murder in the newspaper, as we discussed, and now he's on the case. And he then we get a Kane detective <sighs> montage here. That's a great montage. Detective Butt Grabber. There's, <laughs> there's no flute playing, but it's just him making angry phone calls from payphones and groping prostitutes, <laughs> smoking cigarettes. <laughs> it's great. It's like, man, I feel like he's really working the case. Yeah, and I think that, like, at some point he gets... It doesn't ever tell us what the info is that he gets, but he gets yeah. some <laughs> info about uh, uh, Barbara, and so he goes to her apartment, but she's already gone, and the cops are there, and why are the cops are there already? I don't know. Uh, and they're like, where's this Barbara lady to the roommate? And she's like, oh, she skipped town, and so now Kane is like, I gotta find Barbara. Why are the cops there already, two days after someone was murdered outside of the window? Why did they make it so fast, I wonder? <laughs> 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 we were hoped they had come and gone already yeah, from that right? incident. <laughs> it's a, the timeline's a little wonky. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there was something in the newspaper I, uh, I didn't really see. You know anything about that newspaper thing here at this apartment? <laughs> um, there was a guy that got murdered. Okay, tell us about that. It was in the newspaper. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. I like he'd be a private detective or like a vigilante, but like his whole thing is he shows up and asks cops for their information. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, hey, mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> detective. Uh, just one more question, ma'am. Question, ma'am. Do you know anything about these coupons on page six? <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh,. He, mm. So he finds her headshot. That's what she's. She's a famous singer in town. So he, he's like, now he, he's got a picture of her. 
And then he goes over <laughs> to meet John Daniels at his club mm-hmm. that he actually owns in real life. Yeah, right. Right. And John Daniels is a character named Black. And I guess he's also a tough guy. I feel like he's a refined version of Zachary Kane. He's put some money away that he makes from catching the doing the police work that's not getting done. And he set up a club. But this area is and they've got like gang rules, vigilante, bounty hunter like turfs Mm. because he's like, what are you doing on my turf? Same thing I do every time on your turf. Mm. Ask you for help. Whoa, and then they okay, <laughs> yeah. Whoa, it's gonna be half this time. If it's gonna be half, you're riding <laughs> shotgun. Well, it's and not you're even, like it, half oh, yeah. of what? Like half of the bounty. He's like, hey, I'm looking for this dame named Barbara, the singer. And he's like, okay, I'll take you to her, but I want half. Half of what? I didn't say anything about me being on a manhunt. Chasing a serial killer. Wants half of Barbara. You, you we're gonna split her in half. That's <laughs> it sounds well, like it. So you're normal. It seems right? like <laughs> yeah, they they know each other pretty well. They're like this is not their first team up. Mm-hmm. So he knows the score when 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 Zachary Kane walks through the front door, he needs help with a bounty. He's always or on a, a citizen's man, arrest. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I also right. like the black. I don't know if you guys caught this, but he's playing gambling solitaire. Yep. <laughs> he's got poker <laughs> chips, cash on the table, and he's the only one sitting at it playing solitaire. <laughs> was- and his girlfriend's just watching him like, this is what we're doing tonight? Yeah. Are you up or what's going on there? <laughs> She's just waiting for him to get drunk enough to accuse himself of cheating and flip over the table. <laughs> He pulls a gun on himself. <laughs> you get a, a one man out in the street duel, like in the old West movies. Yeah. <laughs> pulls it. Pulls a card out of his sleeve. What's this? <laughs> I, I just. I, I don't know what that is. Okay, so their first move, and maybe you guys might be able to help me out here because I'm not really sure how this got flushed out, but they tail some dude to a gay bar. Like, I don't know what his relation is to Barbara. He was the guy in the collar that was watching the lady get murdered. And Uh. at one point, Zach Kane eyeballed him. And so they decided to follow him. They're just Hmm. staking out the crime scene still. Oh, okay. So they're not necessarily looking for Barbara, even though he came to Black saying, hey, I'm looking for this lady. Okay, I'll go with you. But on the way, let's do something completely different. (laughs) There's a line of dialogue later that that Black hasn't figured out where she is yet. So they're following his lead at this time. Right. He's like, I'm working on it. No, you're not. You're you're following me going to gay bars and starting fights. You're not doing doing anything. (laughs) Like, get on a payphone, make some calls. Uh, Let's go to her house or her mom's house. That stuff. No, I'll just follow you around while you beat up random dudes. Yeah. So they go to the gay bar and it's <laughs> probably <laughs> offensive. Um and then they just start Something smashing else. the shit out of the gay bar and beating right. everybody up. Yep. Yeah. Which gives them no info. Like none. <laughs> that was Yeah. Good work, dudes. Then what happens? I mean, I don't even remember the connective tissue at this point. Well, fortunately, the movie breaks it up for us because uh, it makes us non-pay attentioners forget about that whole gay bar sequence because the next thing is the happy ending massage parlor murders. Uh. Yes. Yeah, cat boy's back on the prowl. Right. This time we get a better look at his, like, head bag thing. (laughs) Oh, my God. His... I mean, we haven't found this out yet, but his mother is very wealthy. I was like, why can't he mm-hmm. afford a better mask set up? Right. He looks stupid. I mean, he looks like it's kind of like the Zodiac, but just crappy. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe crappy he's Zodiac. like, if, if the Zodiac can do it, I can do it. So I'm going to put on a trash bag. It looks like an executioner's hood that was made out of paper mache by a third grader. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that that's a classic third grade assignment. Okay, kids, today we're gonna make executioner hoods. We yeah, we got really touched when Henry went through third grade and he got to make his executioner's hood. You're like, oh, 
pass into the torch. Glitter. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys playing? What are you guys doing in school? Oh, this is for recess. We're gonna play Louis the Sixteenth at recess. <laughs> Man, oh, I miss those days. <laughs> Whew, the good old times. Okay. Um. So yeah, this lady is like, "Come on back. I'll I'll jerk you off. It's late, but you got a hundo for me." Uh. Ah, Catman. <laughs> and then she gets murdered. So yeah. yeah. Does this now cut to where we actually meet Richard? Yeah. What a weird transition. Like a weird reveal. Like not. Oh, he's been exposed. Somebody saw him, and now we know who he is. It's just the movie saying, "Oh, by the way, this is who the killer is." Here's the killer. Yeah, yeah. And his is it a Turkish kung fu butler? Is that what keto is? <laughs> <laughs> Something. He's it's not, so weird. Keto, he's like yeah. he's not half calorie hot dog buns. He's <laughs> I forgot his he's name. A Turkish. <laughs> Turkish kung fu butler who doesn't really seem to care about the lady he works for by the end of it. Uh, this, uh, yeah, their relationship is pretty weird. It is and weird. also, Keto, like the first thing Keto says to him is like, hey, you got to stop murdering all these people. <laughs> He's like, I'll never stop. They'll never catch me. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, He's very odd. And so Keto's <laughs> trying to be his bro, but like, does Keto do anything other than get beat up for his job? Well, he taught him everything he knows yeah. about martial arts or whatever. He has to get the Lady Bloody Marys probably all the time. Because mm. when probably. he's like trying to talk him down from being a complete psychopath murderer, mm-hmm. the psychopath murderer's mom comes in and she's like, I got a headache. I need a double bloody. And then Keto has to go get that. Right. And so, so our, our, I don't even know his name. I know everybody's name in this yeah. movie except for his Killer. name. I just called him Catboy the whole time. Uh, Richard. Okay. Dick. Doesn't, that doesn't do much for me. Dick would have been better. Um, his motivation is he's got some of the Norman Bates. My mom's a whore. Uh, mm-hmm. So I got to kill all the other whores. Uh, you know, yeah. that old trope. Um, his options were storm the capital or do this. Hey, oh, mm. <laughs> boom, right. suck it. Got it. Riders. Got yeah, it. It's all just mommy issues and tiny penises. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's true to life, though. You know, it may be overdone, yeah, right. but it's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty well, accurate. I think for some, it was storm the capital or stay on your shift at AutoZone. Because <laughs> <laughs> the one guy had an AutoZone name tag on. <laughs> inside of the capital storming. Oh, well, he had to shift maybe, afterwards. They maybe leave that in the car. That's the greatest <laughs> thing about the insurrection is that they thought they could overthrow the government and like go back home. Like right. Everybody's just going to go back to I got to work tomorrow, but this should all be wrapped up. Like what did they expect to happen if they succeeded? <laughs> That would just, uh, you know, behead the vice president and um, everything will be good then, right? Yeah, Yeah, get home in time for Jimmy Fallon. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Enjoy all the luxuries my society affords me. And piss and moan about taxes I don't pay. (laughs) Oh, man. God bless him. Uh, don't God bless them. Actually, God fuck them. Um, so he yeah. is also casually threatening his mother. Like th- their relationship is rapidly ter- deteriorating. Like even after all these years, he's finally broke, and he's like, "The next time you say something whorish, I'm gonna kill you." Um, and she's like, "Don't do that, Jimmy." And so he's like, "All right, well, then I'm gonna go beat the crap out of our butler." And he does that and almost <laughs> kills the butler. And he's like, "Well, I don't. If I kill you, then I'm out of butler, and they're hard to come by." Um, so. I'm I'm going to go kill some ladies. I'll be out late again tonight, Keto. I have... Then he finds just a random couple, I guess. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like he's stalking these women because he does the thing about the hair. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense later with Sherry Jackson's character. But just like if you've got pretty hair, he's going to kill you. That's his M.O. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we also know that he, he, he every time he looks at a, a lady that who's being mm. a lady, even though he thinks that they're being whorish, mm-hmm. uh, he sees his mother. 
Yeah. Like he doesn't mm-hmm. even see them as a person. He just sees another version of his mom. Yeah. So I don't know. That doesn't happen to you guys. Is. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Only when I'm having sex. Right. Thankfully. <laughs> I just see like a hot dog that looks like one of those wavy arm car dealership things. When you're having sex? Yeah. Oh, cool. Like, hey, little hot dog, you got wavy arms. <laughs> Take it. How <laughs> erotic. <laughs> That's how you talk. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> talk oh. dirty to me, hot dog. That's Sam. Sam's voice. <laughs> then I use my own voice to like with the hot dog back. I'm gonna get mustard on your pants. <laughs> oh, Is that dirty? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you know we say some weird shit on this podcast, but that yeah. might have gone over the top. <laughs> uh, oh, so I'm he glad goes I'm not to driving murder. right now. An Asian woman in her shower, and this woman is showering with a towel on her head. (laughs) That's not going to keep your hair from getting wet, nor will it dry you off later now. You're doing this wrong. But her husband is there. They didn't have a shower consultant on set. You got to give him some leeway here. I thought Deborah Hill was the fucking script consultant. Not the shower consultant. (laughs) <laughs> she's a weakness. strict bather she doesn't know <laughs> inexperienced <laughs> I would assume it goes like this you put a towel on and get in there yeah. um, her boyfriend chases uh, Catboy off and then they proceed to have a karate fight on the rooftop that I believe <sighs> <laughs> has chopsticks as weapons in it. <laughs> yes, he fight he brings chopsticks to a knife fight. <laughs> and Racist? is able This has got to be well, the most sure. offensive thing that happens in here, I think. <laughs> I and mean, it's some pretty offensive it, shit. Is it racist or just stupid? I'm not sure. <laughs> it can be both. <laughs> it can be both. <laughs> oh my god. But he gets promptly killed. <laughs> yeah. He does not win. <laughs> and then Richard is like, he breaks his neck and then goes, ah, like, well, wait, I thought you were murdering the ladies because you're really getting off on killing this guy now. Like, are you going to need to pick a lane on your murders? Yeah. Yeah. He's a equal opportunity murderer. He sees his mother and everybody. Hey, dude, you're being whorish. (laughs) Hey, dude. (laughs) Hey, bro. Stop being such a little tramp, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hussy. <laughs> Fella. Yeah. Did I tell you you have beautiful hair? No, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't have beautiful hair. I'm Vin Diesel. <laughs> Why did, who okay. did he say this to? I have this written down, but there's no context for it. But it says... You'll go on like everything is Sunday brunch and sex orgies, just like normal. Do you guys remember mom. that part? His mom? Yeah, he said his yeah. mom. Yeah, when he threatened her. <clears throat> That's right. Okay. <sighs> so now uh, Kane <laughs> is going to go find... Uh, he goes to, to some apartments to find Barbara. I guess Black said they're here or something. This is yeah. What is this place? Is it is it like a drug den or... I guess. It's just or like just a... Pimps? No, they seem like they're just bad guys. They don't oh, seem to be in on drugs or pimping. <laughs> and then later they revealed that they were going to blackmail Richard on the murder, mass murdering thing. Like, well, we found out he was rich. So rather than just stop him from killing all these people, mm-hmm. especially this person that's our friend that he knows has seen him, uh-huh. we're going to we're gonna blackmail him. Okay. So why are they even protecting Barbara? I mean, this, this this whole sequence is so weird because they they're protecting Barbara from getting murdered, and and Kane's like, oh yeah, well I'm gonna kill all you guys, you sons of bitches, how dare you? And then <laughs> I'm gonna grab her and I'm gonna beat the crap out of her until she tells me what's up. He could have just honestly been like, okay, so I'm on the hunt for the murderer. Um, what you got? I'll I'll, I'll help you. I'll catch this guy. They would have gone the same way because they'd be like, "No, we're gonna blackmail that guy." No, you're gonna die if you do that. That's a really dumb plan, guys. 
It and then stupid. Zachary Kane would be like, okay, guys, I myself do stupid shit all the time, but this is stupid even for me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let and me uh, like, help you out. It. Storm in the Capitol. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can all go back to the. If you want to understand stupid people. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's where it all goes back. <laughs> okay, so did he, he 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 gets stabbed, right? Yeah, he stabs him mm. or in the tummy. like punches him with the knife because it looks like he's been stabbed and he gets he's... knocked out with his own derringer and a shotgun. The the head fiend blackmailer, whatever this guy is, he's holding a switchblade. And yeah. he does off, you know, we, we, it's not in the shot, but he swings his arm that's holding the knife at like he, he could either be punching him or he could be stabbing him. And then Kane's got a bloody tummy after that. Kane's dang. If no. you get stabbed in the tummy, you're not going to just be like, oh, man, that was a tough one. He kind of stabbed him in the side, like just a little love stab. Like, hey, oh. you're going to feel that one tomorrow. Uh, wash it out or I'll get it infected. But I'm showing you that, that I mean business. Or However, Kane's later, abs. Sherry Jackson claims that he has broken ribs from knives. So I don't know hmm. what exactly happens to him here. Okay. But they conk him out either way, yeah. And then he wakes up in the room and Barbara's there and uh, they he gets free after saying, uh, you guys suck. And him and Black beat the crap out of everybody and kill a few guys. And then he hassles Barbara, as we said. And... Black's like, you know what? I do this for the money. You do this because you like it. You're crazy. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And then sl just leaves the movie. He is mm -hmm. no longer in the movie. Yeah. And it sets it up like the credits and even one of the movie posters I saw, it sets it up like it is these two dudes. Yeah. Uh, th and this guy's, yeah, he's barely there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so he goes in solo uh, to face the head dude that I talked about. And they barely fight. It's weird. Uh, but eventually it ends with the dude getting stabbed with his no own knife and Cain looking soulfully into his eyes as the life escapes from him. And uh -huh. he <laughs> he came a little. Yeah, he's he gives a him the Bennett job. Yeah. Cain's mm. not a good guy. No. Not at all. He's Should he be in jail... Eating. For murder yet. Well, I mean, again, we're not real clear on the law here, but uh, I think, I I think he's Dexter. Seriously, if yeah. he, if he wasn't doing this thing, he would be doing other things. He'd mm. be looking at the mirror, you know, the the Joker Batman thing. We're two sides of the same coin, Buster. I'm willing like to Blade. bet he's guilty of other murders. <laughs> he's like Blade the Vampire Slayer, only of other serial killers who are not him, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. He's probably going to jail for all those parking tickets he's got. <laughs> <laughs> They're never going to get it's like Al Capone. They're not going to get him on the on the racket on murdering. They're going to get him on tax evasion. <laughs> so that's how they get Kane parking tickets. Have you ever tried to not double park a GTO? <laughs> yeah, and ill huge in LA. car. <laughs> All right, so he gets in Barbara's face, and he's like, tell me the name of the killer. And she's like, God, I would if you just let me go and stop slapping me around. But uh, he gives her, or she gives him the name and learns about this blackmail plot. And he's like, okay, that was a dumb thing. So uh, after that uh, hard day, he goes back to Jennifer's house. And yeah. he's like, hey, baby, uh, you remember me? And she's like, Steve? <laughs> Gary? <laughs> no, I... Gotta be honest, I don't. You want her to do that, but she's like, I love you, I Zachary know. Kane. And you're like, why? Why? Because of the you bag pizza. Bag pizza. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's from Pizza Hut, you guys. And then she goes on this <laughs> melodramatic thing. Do I bug you, baby? And she's like, do you safe? A f or, yeah, no, you don't bug me, but you do. You're tearing me apart. Well, do yourself a favor and forget about me. I can't. I love you. God. It's really <sighs> also, you're still you in, in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to dingy sex town. Oh, my God. oh boy. Yeah. So. Oh, and then, then, then the next time that he wakes up, 
I guess they had the things. And he's like, what time is it? And she's like, the day after yesterday. No shit. (laughs) (laughs) That's when he kills her. (laughs) It's like, God damn it. I have had enough. That is over the line. (laughs) Okay. All right. Like... He's covered in blood. Like, their relationship is... You don't even show... Uh, she's got some points here. But uh, the, one of the points that she really screws up on is that she loves him. Um, because the only time she he shows up, I guess, is this today when uh, he's covered in blood. And she's like, you should go to the hospital. And also, are you wanted for crimes? And he's like, yes and no. I mean, no and yes. And uh, she's like, okay, I can live with this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you like my Joe Namath shirt? <laughs> yeah, Sam likes my Joe Namath like shirt it. a lot. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Joe Namath yeah, shirt I did as well. <clears throat> so now they get invited. She set something up, I guess. She's, and she's a socialite. She's got an invite to the mom's party, the next orgy that she's going to host uh, at their place. And they're like, "Okay, so um, let's let's go there and meet Catboy." And pretty much they do immediately. Yeah. Now, how do uh, how do Jen and Cowboy end up in the billiard room alone together? I am not sure how she gets lost, but in movies, it's like somebody's snooping around and they claim that they're lost. Right. She actually just gets lost. <laughs> or, you know, here's what we know about Mom is that she's uh, she's a party thrower of uh, bowls and keys. And mm-hmm. this party is headed there rapidly. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. she's making out with random dudes. There's some dudes in the pool making out with a bunch of different chicks. Yeah. Like, this, the, it, the sun's not just imagining stuff. This is going to turn into an orgy. And Jennifer's like, I've seen this go down before. I am not interested in Eyes Wide Shut stuff. So I'm just going to go see if I can find the bathroom and hang out in it for a little while. Right. I think she's going to go see if she can find some drugs inside before they leave. Yeah, right. Mm. <laughs> she's an L.A. girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, this scene with her and Rod Richard, Richard, mm-hmm. uh, man, he is, uh, he's pretty great. <laughs> His whole uh, do uh, people when I'm alone with people, I make them apprehensive. Do I make you apprehensive, Jennifer? And then he slams the pool ball into the other balls, and she's like, "Yes," and he's like, "Why?" <laughs> it's incredible. She's like, I, I would have been like, because your be- your behavior is bizarre. You're doing it right now. <laughs> yeah. You really you don't were, know. You don't get you it. Were, <laughs> you were singing about birds when I came in here. Right. And now you're really weirding me out. That's right. Singing that song. Wish I could. How does that song go? Do you remember? I don't no. remember. Damn. Uh, and she slaps him eventually because he's grabbing her and jostling her around. And that doesn't like make mm. him more angry and attack her, which is what you think is going to happen. Yeah. He just makes him more weird. He sits down and is like, oh, oh, dear. Wow. How well, about that? Yeah. He starts calling her mother like he, he reverts yeah. and yeah, she's right, his mother right. suddenly. And he's like, Man, can I stay with you, mother? Can I stay with you tonight? Hmm. Yeah, and I love. Then he Walt- starts. He sings about the birds again too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's when she sneaks I, out. That's yeah, when she, she starts. starts okay, I'm gonna back, back out. <laughs> this fucking weirdo singing on, about birds again. It's on screen. She's <laughs> like, yee. <laughs> and meanwhile, there's like two things that like get her. I don't want to spoil. Like something's gonna happen to her in a second. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And none of it would have gone down if one, she wouldn't have got lost looking for drugs, mm-hmm. or two. The Zachary Kane totally just follows Richard around and stink eyes him before right? this scene. Mm. Like, I got my eye on you. Like, okay, let's yeah. Captain Obvious. Um, no. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. man. And then so th- she's leaving. She's got she's found the ludes and she's like, This party's over. Uh I'm going home. Uh uh Kane, are you coming with me? And he's like, No, baby, I'm going to take him down. And she's like, You can't don't do this. Call the police. This is above you. Um, just come home with me. And he's like, I'm going alone, baby. Yeah. The reward money mm-hmm. yeah. would be available to the person who called the police right now. Right. Yeah. But that's he's not how do he does it. things. 
with his bare knuckles. That's right. Yep. He's going to fist him. I mean, like, punch him in the face, I mean. I don't know if he's going to fist him with his fi- in the face, you know? That's that's what I meant by that. <laughs> Good thing. Yeah. I was yeah. confused. I don't know why he needed all that lube. <laughs> Using the whole fist, Doc? <laughs> yes, to punch you. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and yeah, and she's like, don't leave. House. I love you again. She's like, I love right, you. Right. And I'm like, why? Do you Stop love it. this guy? You're like, a, you're, you could probably do whatever you wanted to in this planet, Jennifer. And you, you're with Zachary Kane. Yeah, she's How it as, always goes. She's as unbalanced as Richard is. Yeah. Yeah. She also fails to mention to Zachary that Richard has definitely got his eyes on her now. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. pertinent information for their next step of the come plan. Come with me. I will be yeah. murdered if you do not. He'll come to also, us if yeah. you just stay right. with me. You should I'm, come with me. I have made myself bait. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I'll I'll even dress up as his mom. Like like this really make this work. I mean, yeah. even if he's not he doesn't know where I live, I'll we'll go get him. You know, like, the, the, be smart about this, stupid. Yeah. Instead, he sneaks in with his tiny gun and he's stalking around. And in the greenhouse, he finds the mom dead. I guess the or, like what happened to all the guests? Because like orgies take yeah, a while, what's going don't on? they? They're orgying, I guess. And he conned his mom into like going in late and they're just banging away. So fervently that they can't hear the murder in the greenhouse Uh, once a month she has an orgy with only premature ejaculators so it's (laughs) over everyone's already hit the road (laughs) she likes an early night once in a while (laughs) columbo's coming on later Uh (sighs) uh-huh leaving so soon gary i'm just gonna be honest i didn't make it out of the car About to put his keys in. Ah, shit. Ah, I'm going to take off. <laughs> Never trust a man wearing vinyl pants. <laughs> okay. All right, so... Oh, and uh, while he's looking at her body, he gets karate chopped unconscious. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Got yeah. dropped on him. And he's stuffed in the trunk, and Catboy's like... Uh, Let's. You're gonna sleep with the fishes, Zachary Kane. Cato, yeah. can you handle this? Even though I could just like take care of it right now, um, you go chuck him off a cliff. Yeah, that's what happens. And it then, doesn't. But then no, he takes him to go chuck him off the cliff, and then Zachary Kane reaches into his. This looks like a kung fu serape bathrobe. Is it? Keto's Jack bathrobe that he's reaching into? Yeah, because Keto takes his Derringer and puts it on the belt of his poncho bathrobe thing. Yeah. And he reaches in and he pulls it out and shoots him. Huh. And then Keto dies. Yeah. And indignantly. This is, this is like where I'm like, well, Kane is not on the up and up. Because, you know, you would make this part of your report to the police, but he just kicks the body over the cliff. <laughs> I'm like, well, what are you going to say about that? <laughs> He's like, man, done with him. Yeah, I guess Kato wasn't worth bringing in. I guess. <laughs> There's just a pile of other dead bodies down at the bottom of this cliff because it's the L.A. County dead body mm. drop off. Mm-hmm. Depository. Where they go. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, Catboy, he's out on the prowl to Jennifer's, and uh, he judo punches his way in. I don't know if you guys remember saw this, yeah, but that's yeah. how he gets it. It breaks the door lock with the judo punch. I like it. It uh, was like he punched it in a way that his chi or his chakra mm-hmm. was able to shatter the mechanics of the lock without damaging the door. Yeah. yeah. This guy could be a master thief. He's just... But he's wasting his time with this serial killing, I guess. Yeah. I, I I don't I guess I don't have to talk about this, but I want to. I watched this slow mo guys video a while ago where they uh they they went out and got a bunch of Shaolin guys, like they flew all the way to China and got met up with the Shaolin guys 
and then they slow mode them breaking uh like you know kicking stuff and breaking through it and uh it's pretty impressive. Like uh, they did this thing where the guy ran up a bunch of people and kicked a stick in midair that was like twenty feet up, and then like cat landed. Like you should check it out. Shaolin oh. monks are legit. <laughs> Have you seen right. the not Shaolin monks that only practice the art of? Getting kicked in the nuts. <laughs> yes, I am. It's awesome. And that the master takes battering rams to the nuts. Uh, wow. I mean, it's the same concept. It's all about where you focus that chi, right? You know, your power, your energy. Or after the first 600 yeah. times you get cut, kicked in the nuts, they, they just don't work anymore. <laughs> They're no longer They're nuts. just lifeless skin sack. Kick me in the pancakes, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> What happens if they get punched in the face? Oh. Hmm. If they were if they had their chi focused somewhere else, they may be in trouble. <laughs> I focus you know all what? my chi on making de- delicious banana breads. <laughs> 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 so I'm so good at that. <laughs> I don't think they would allow you in the Shaolin Temple. <laughs> Probably. Why not? He's got banana bread. Yeah. Yeah. Let somebody eat with banana bread. Bunch of grumps. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want my banana bread. <laughs> this is exclusive. <laughs> I've been able to get everywhere. I mean, I got into the queen's bedroom with this banana bread. That's right. <laughs> Can't get in no sample. Sourpuss is in here. They don't want nothing. <laughs> I gotta say, Shaolin monks, I have never met a group of more unfriendly people than you. <laughs> I am going to leave you a bad re- Yelp review. Good day, sir. <laughs> I brought vegan butter and everything. I thought. <sighs> okay, all right. Uh, so Jennifer's dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some it guy walks in neighbor. on it and he gets killed, too. Yeah, Jennifer's death was very... Uh, not necessarily anticlimactic. Just I thought it was really vague. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't see it, right? It no. doesn't. It doesn't happen on camera. I, I thought maybe sure she, she got away. Dead. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought maybe him killing the guy that intrudes on it might have mm-hmm. satiated him, and he'd leave. Maybe. Right. But that's not what happened. Apparently, that's not. Mm-hmm. How he, she got stabbed someplace, and now she's dead from it. Yeah. Uh, so Kane shows up. He's way too late. There's like a buttload of people inside. And he's like, what are you guys all doing here? Is yeah. this another one of them orgies? Like, are we leaving off from earlier? Oh, <laughs> dang it. My girlfriend's dead. He says, oh, my baby. <laughs> oh, my baby. <laughs> and then doesn't even pay attention to the other dead guy laying no. on the bed. Like, right. Oh, my baby. <laughs> And you, sir. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry what about you, too. And what then he just stares here? crazily. Just st- his still face. Those crazy eyes. And then it cuts <laughs> to him making a fist in his car with the same yep. crazy eyes. <laughs> yeah, he's gone so mad. He has completely missed running over the killer with his car. Mm. Yeah. He also buckles it's his seatbelt before it. this scene. <laughs> It's like the most un Robert or yeah. un Zachary Kane thing he could do. He, he's he's clenching his fist and staring, and then he goes up, ah, ah, safety first, and pops it on. He's like, okay, buckle up. All right, that's now back to this. And that that's probably what throws him off, and he misses his only target right. with yeah. the car. He's like, oh, here he comes. Why don't I just completely miss him? It's not even close. It wasn't even close, and. He didn't have to head on him either. He just needed to pull out. He wasn't going to be able to stop. He was going over the hood. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now they're in a car chase, uh, the car chase with no permits, as we discussed. Um, It ends up in the river, but uh, I want to stop before we get to the big climax. What did you guys think about this car chase? I liked it because it felt like they had no permits. And to me, that's exciting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know if it was really a good car chase, though, but that aspect of it I enjoyed. It seemed like it would go about as good as it could go if it, if a GTO was chasing a bike down the hills. Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was kind of boring. Like, it was a lot of just driving, and then, like, every he now goes- and then, they'd, they'd run over the boxes in the fruit stand. But uh-huh. uh, for the most part, it was just them driving and, like, stink-eyeing each other. 
Yeah, and there's a bunch of sequences where he can't, there's not enough room to get a GTA to whip around where he has to just do aggressive <laughs> K-turns. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And oh, and and the and Richard goes down like two or three staircases, and not particularly uh-huh. fast. Sometimes he's mm. really like having to nurse it down the last staircase. I feel like if you're if you're on a motorcycle getting chased, and you've gotten to the point where you're far enough away from the guy that now you're on stairs, yeah. you're, you've probably gotten away. <laughs> like you could get a he, he can't drive on those stairs. Yeah. No, but the, he's circling around. He knows he's just trying to get to the bottom. And also the guy getting away on the motorcycle is wearing coveralls, a helmet, and goggles. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't look like the greatest, even though in previous scenes well, he says he's faster. Yeah. He he looks like he's pretty shitty at riding a motorcycle. Yeah. Well, it turns out this killer, yeah, I mean, his mother is very wealthy. I don't know if you've noticed or heard about oh, that. Oh, right, right, right. His mother's yeah, very yeah. wealthy. Um, He's... He's somewhat of a fancy lad. <laughs> he's the, a bit uh, of a dandy. Cabin boy mold. <laughs> 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 and this is best illustrated when he gets into a foot chase or <laughs> has to run. <laughs> he's it's more of a it's more of a prance than a run, <laughs> I would say. He prances away. <laughs> it was hard to make uh, Robert Vajaro look good sprinting, but this guy did it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's why he was cast. <laughs> like, we gotta, we gotta match this perfectly so he looks cool. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. So eventually, they both wreck in the river, uh, which leads to them having to get in a fist fight, which Kane mm-hmm. loses. Uh, okay, and then momentarily. The yeah, well, that, that we'll, we'll circle back to what I just said uh, here okay. in a little bit. Uh, the killer hides in the train yard, and then they mm-hmm. get in uh, a train, top of the train chase on foot. More prancing. More prancing, and then they get in a fist fight with, well, and Kane dives onto him from above, and you're like, yeah. okay, he's got him. No, Kane just lost in this yes. fist fight again. Again. Well, uh, we were showed that Richard is the greatest martial arts practitioner mm. ever, kind yeah. of earlier. Yeah, but we're also told that Kane is the best bare knuckle punching guy ever. He jumps onto him from the top of a train. You can kill a guy just by doing that. Yeah, I think the the backstory of uh Kane is that he's a washed up boxer that can barely beat guys up for money. They mm. needed to do that better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also they sh- Kane they needs show, to have they show they don't tell. <laughs> yeah. Well Kane needs to have a little bit of a humble check because he thinks he's one tough guy. He does. Yeah. That's for sure. Okay. Now they're on a bridge and they're fighting Oh, and guess what? Kane loses again, gets yeah. kicked off the bridge. Gets kicked off the bridge. But this is how he, I mean, it doesn't make sense, having seen it twice now. He doesn't just climb back up. He climbs all the way under, like right. monkey bars to the other side mm-hmm. of the bottom of the bridge, uh-huh. and then comes up on the other side, which is apparently surprising to Richard. Right. Yeah. And then Richard is scared. He's like, you just came up the other side. Oh, fuck. Yeah, he's like, oh, your and upper that, body strength. I had no idea. <laughs> in that, he's like, oh, you don't even know the half of it, because now he means business. I guess these other yeah. fights they were having, he was just toying with easy him. on him or, like, wasn't paying attention or something. But now, any time that Richard tries to punch him, he just catches his fist and crushes his hand. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and then, like, that's how it ends. Richard basically kills himself. He, oh, like, no. He's going to miss off the bridge. I thought Kane threw well, him. Well, Kane gives him a kick, doesn't he? Yeah, after yeah. he misses a punch and just kind of pushes yeah. him. Right. This, he just shuffles helps him, him off the bridge. Going. Yeah. What and then he, yeah, he lands with his throw. head on a rock. and He looks comfy. Yeah, it looks all right. <laughs> I like the pan out. He's like, I mean, that's how I want kind of got a smile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. So now... And Funky it's just tunes, credits, bitchin' mm-hmm. music. Him watching down, walking down the train tracks. Lights up tries the smoke. To light, yeah. Tries to. Ah, doesn't work. They're all <laughs> smashed up from the fight. So he gets pissed <laughs> and he throws them off the bridge. And then it says the end, and you're like, 
you are definitely worse off than you were when you started this movie. <laughs> but that's right? the thing. Like, he kicks it off the bridge. Is he going to go down, retrieve the body, and claim the reward? Or is he I just like, think... this is personal now because you killed Jennifer, so fuck it, I'm just killing you. And you crush my guess... smokes. But you can't bring the dead guy into the place no. and go, yup, this is the serial killer. Right. This he... is the guy. I'd like my reward yeah. money now. They're like, no, here's your... Jail time for murder. True. Yeah. True. No, here's your life sentence. Because the only the only thing that he has is Barbara said yeah. this is the guy. Barbara is now gone. She's yeah. a I mean, she's hanging out with some rough dudes, so she's probably dead. But let's just give her the benefit of the doubt and she's up in uh the Hamptons with her mother in law. <laughs> okay, maybe that's too much of a benefit of the doubt. <laughs> um but uh yeah, she's gone. You got nothing, pal. Yeah. We killed my girlfriend. Oh, and what proof of you that do you have? She knew about it. She knew. She's dead. These other people are dead, and his mom's like, dead. And the only connection between these deaths is you and Angela Lansbury. Uh huh. <laughs> Not to mention there was another dude in the bedroom where your girlfriend was murdered. In. Um, so maybe she was caught in a little hanky panky and maybe you killed her. Okay, listen, I know none of this looks good. I get it. Just hear me out. Okay, maybe I wasn't doing the right thing. I should have called when Jennifer was like, let's call the cops. I should have done it then. But I got this whole bare knuckle thing. I gotta, you know, keep up appearances. I'm kind of a, you know, it's my release. It's my, uh, it's a, it's a, you know, like this guy killed because of his mom. I have a thing with my dad and a punchy punches. And I just, you know, it's how I exercise those demons. You guys get it, right? <laughs> Sir, uh, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, right. Chicken, chicken nuggets, please. <laughs> Can I put this guy in your trash can? <laughs> yeah. Okay, actually, can I put this guy in your chili? <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. Let's do some questions here, guys. Uh, I'm going to start with Sam. So when we watched this the first time, I guess. Mm-hmm. Tucker obviously wasn't there as we talked about that, but Jeff and Roman and I decided that you could actually remake this movie shot to shot and just do a better job and it would actually be a good movie. Really? Do you think that's true? I I think you got some explaining to do. I still think it's possible because the way it ends up, like when you really think about this movie, he's kind of a fuck up Mm -hmm. and by the end of it, he's really a fuck up and he fucked everything up Mm -hmm. and The movie tells you that the whole time. John Daniels is like, no, man, you're kind of a fuck up. I don't want to deal with you. So it's not like it's failing to tell the story it wants to tell. It's just that some of the shots are too dark. It's a weird vibe through the whole thing. I feel like there's a good movie in there somewhere. I think there might be a good movie. I'm with you. Okay, I see this. This It's not that the story is necessarily messed up. It's the narrative that's messed up a little bit because some of these things aren't, or maybe they're a little too subtle or not flushed out enough or explored, including like we were talking about earlier, like this this gray area between a vigilante and a and a bounty hunter. Like that could be explored. Um, his the, the, What Tucker's talking about is like his... Vilmu, like why he's who he is and has to do the things that he does is because he's, you know, Joker and Batman, Joker and Batman. Um, yeah, there could be, there could be. Let's do yeah. it. Let's start tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, there may be a good movie in there, but would it be better than this one? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> tough. Cause you couldn't, you couldn't make one mistake if you did it. Cause you'd actually have to make a good movie. Whereas if you didn't, you would make one that, is completely inferior to this one. Yeah. Well, I think you've got some advantages because you don't have a lot of people going, well, it's not as good as the original. Like, like, uh, you know, say like walking tall, walking tall was kind of a big deal in its own, in its own day. Uh, not, Mm -hmm. you know, blockbuster or anything. It wasn't jaws, but it was, it was a beloved movie by the, the appropriate audience. I don't think there's a lot of people that know that this movie even exists. No. Yeah. I agree. I had never heard of it mm-hmm. until we watched it 10, 15 years ago, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I do not have any questions, Tucker. Oh, no, just my, uh, you know, was he going to get the, try to get the bounty was my big question there. We already addressed yeah. that, so. I think he's just going to go try to realize immediately, ah, oh, God, those are my last smokes and I'm out of money. He's got to go back down there and get those and try to make them work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that does lead to one question with all of the frustration. Did he win? Hmm. Did, did he, in his, I mean, like by our rules or his rules? Either. His rules, yes. He never loses. That mm. is who Zachary Kane is. Mm. He, you know, there is no I'm a fuck up uh, because he's never screwed up in his mind. Otherwise, he would get, yeah. quit walking this path that he puts himself on. In our rules, absolutely. Jennifer was a smoke show. <laughs> yeah. Fuck Bummer. Up. And, and a payday. Like, I mean, she's a sugar mama. You can't yeah. do better, Zachary Kane. That's not what he's in it for. Nope. He's in it for the knuckles to face. Yeah. Yeah. So he forgets about her within a week. Uh, Jennifer yeah, who? Yep. He's right back to fisting guys on the street. <laughs> and Pizza Hut. Yep. <laughs> and Pizza Hut. Time pizza. to go back to Pizza Hut. <laughs> Find where, me another. Your... That's where all the hot ladies get taken mm-hmm. to dinner by the Rogers of the world. <laughs> yep. Where's your GTO, Zachary? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? You had a car. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, got no clue. Did you? What's your girlfriend? I had a girlfriend. What? <laughs> Did Who I have you? cigarettes he... in either one of those things? <laughs> and then I'm looking for some gets... cigarettes. <laughs> Beat up, dragged to jail. The police are like, "You did fill out the paperwork, but this guy was just asking you about your car. Mm-hmm. Also, what happened to your car? We found one like it blown up in the river." <laughs> Is that yours? <laughs> With your license plate and registration on it? He has no, no license insurance. plate or registration. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Scrape yeah. the serial numbers off. <laughs> They'll never trace me. It's like, I never had a car. Do. That's what cops do is they, they check it by the serial number. It's not a gun, Tucker. <laughs> well, they have those numbers inside the door. What are those numbers? Vins. Vin number. That's it. <laughs> That's I'm just going to a... tell him the paint code and whether it's been in an accident before. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. I don't need the VIN for that one. This one got blown up. <laughs> so are you saying that there's no way to track a car if it doesn't have a license? Uh, If you're the cops? Like, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I suppose. Like, I don't know. Like, if you found a car that wasn't registered and had no identification that way, would you be able to track down... I think you can find who the title, who who the last owner of the title is. And I just actually, mm. I just went through this, Tucker. I sold a car recently, and I found out that when you um, do the title, there's this little thing that you tear off on the bottom, and it says release of liability. I always thought that that was the way to say, go ahead and release the title to the gentleman that is purchasing this, or the gentlewoman. Uh, but yeah. it's not. What that piece of paper is, is d- indemnifying you of any crimes that are committed in the car itself. So if it's used in a drive-by or something. The cops can't come to you and be like, hey, man, you, you're you our number one suspect because uh. you've released the liability and sent that into the state. Huh. Yeah. Pretty interesting. So, yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if you don't send that little thing in. They're coming to you, and they're going to be like, "Yeah, we got to lock you up, Buster. You're you're suspect right. number one." And then the other guy gets away with it. I'm just saying, what's the identification of that particular car? If there's no, they don't have the title. Obviously, you're not going to keep a title in your car, right? There's no registration. Mm-hmm. There's no license plates. Is there any number on that car that would identify where what dealership it came from or anything like that? No, nope. once the VIN is off and all the tags are gone, the that's what the chop shop guys do. Yeah. yeah. But the VIN number would give you some of that? Or the VIN number the VIN number will take you, officer, to a, a place I like to call heaven, the DMV. Mm. Yeah. Cops love going to the DMV. It's just, you So know, if you had a VIN number, you took it to the DMV, they could tell you who it was registered yeah. to. Yeah, who before. who has okay. the title. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's going all to jail. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. All right. Final justice recommendations, will be guys. Served. <laughs> I don't know about justice. Um, <laughs> that's, that's pushing it. <laughs> that's true. Final recommendations. I'm going to start. Uh, no, I believe it or not, I did not enjoy this movie. I thought wow. it was as humdrum and as cliche 
and not special in any way as a myriad of these late seventies tough guy movies. Uh, with I mean, I think, I think with, I mean, we say this a lot, but with the right group of people, um, mm-hmm. it could be a fun riffer. I mean, we riffed the hell out of it, obviously, on this podcast, and I had fun talking about it, but I didn't have a fun time solo watching it. I just mm-hmm. thought it was bland. So um, save your money. If you feel like having a Sunday, maybe I'm going to fall asleep movie, uh, check it out on YouTube. But other than that, pass for me. Tucker. I do recommend it. Um, I had a great time. I did think like I was thinking the whole time I was like this would be a great bad movie day movie with some friends. Uh, so I was, you know, trying to be in that headspace when watching it. But I had a blast. I thought it was really funny. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. But yeah, watch it on YouTube if it's the same. Don't pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> what, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Do some of that pirating. That's right. I also give it a recommendation because I like it a lot. And... You are on the outside opinion on that one, Justin. Not yeah. that your opinion is wrong or anything, right. because this was the bell of the ball for the Bad Movie Day year in review session that we did that year. It wasn't mm-hmm. just that we all liked it. We all liked it more than we liked anything else we watched that whole year. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember you talking about it. Just because it's so screwy and he's so shitty at his job. It's like a head scratcher. I think the head scratching factor of it is what makes me like it so goddamn much. Yeah. And you might, I mean, you're on to something with the, is there a good movie in it? It's, it's such a complete failure because maybe there, maybe it is a good movie, but it's just so poorly presented and narrated that it's, it's you know, it totally belongs on Stinker Madness. Um, I just don't... Uh, feel like it was worth the time but i love talking about it so maybe it is worth the time go ahead and do it i'll change there it i'm flip-flopping Woo! i'm pulling i'm Flip pulling flopper. a zach kane <laughs> <laughs> somebody him. fist my face <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so uh i got some streaming do's and don'ts this week guys um starting with uh, some smabfa contenders potentially Stop me if you guys have seen either of these. Currently streaming on Netflix, starring Liam Neeson's in The Ice Road. I have not seen it. I saw a preview for it, and I Mm -hmm. was like, wow, that looks bad. Wowie, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so here's, you know, the Ice Road truckers. You know, that stuff, tough guys Mm -hmm. on in big rigs driving over ice. That's what they're doing here. There's some dudes trapped in a mine, and... Uh, they got to bring this special tool in to bore out a hole so they can get the guys out or something like that. And they got to cross the, the lake of, of nastiness and up the mountains of uh, the Caradras Pass and all that sort of stuff. It is incredibly stupid. Oh, also Larry Fishburne's in it and um, some lady huh. that I've seen before. Uh, it, it's like unfathomably dumb. Like, even for Liam Neeson at this point in his career, and I think that this was one of the first movies that was back in the theater after they opened up, like, kind of like, hey, so what are you guys thinking about uh, showing a movie or two? Uh, Regal Cinemas and the the other one that's in California. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, AMC. Yeah, AMC. Thank you. Um, And so I think this did get a theatrical release, but it is... Far stupider than I've seen him be in. And he's like the last run of 10 movies with Liam Neeson in it direct to video are some of the stupidest out there. But this leaps them. Mm. And I love it. I really liked it. It's a trucking movie. um, Super stupid. I mean, I just can't I can't describe it. It's a do for me. Uh, This would be I think maybe because Sam's not a big fan of Liam Neeson's, it might be best or worst bad movie for him material. But for me, it was best bad movie material. So I say do. Um, And then The Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt Mm -hmm. and Vaughn Stravinsky and the big booby lady from Glow. Hmm. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I saw the trailer. I was planning on watching it tonight, actually. Yeah. You haven't seen anything about it, Tucker? I, I'm aware of it. I haven't watched yeah. any trailers or anything, though. Okay. It's on Prime. Uh, I yeah. say do. It's also stupid. Uh, anytime you get into timey-wimey uh, stuff, it never makes any sense. I mean, even 
except for Loki. Loki's really good with the time travel. Um, but uh, for the most part, time travel movies are really always dumb and they can't work and they break their own rules and this is no exception in it. But it's still a lot of fun. Um, good, good monster creature features. Uh, but the premise is really, really, really stupid. Like, let's <laughs> let's go back in time to win this war. We're, we're running out of soldiers, so we'll recruit our parents. But then if your parents die in the people future war... Disappearing aren't... in the future, like when their no, parents get killed? <laughs> no, no fading away while playing Johnny Be Good. Um, huh. Yeah, it's really stupid. But um, it gets even dumber, and then there's like some really hokey lines here and there that you like are supposed to be big dramatic moments. But at the same time, it was a lot of fun. I recommend it to both of you. I think you both would like it. All right. I'll check yeah. it out. So that's what I got. Anybody else? Nope. Uh, no, I don't think I've streamed anything uh, really new lately. Didn't Just add magic with my daughter, but I don't think we want to talk about that on this program. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all oh, right. I watched, I watched No Sudden Move on HBO Max. Oh, that's, that's the new uh, Steven Soderbergh movie with right. uh, Benicio Del Toro and Don and Cheadle. Um, I really it? liked it. Uh, okay. It's a fun... Um, crime thriller it's period so you know it's almost hard to make a movie that takes place now and make me give a shit about <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and so uh but anyway it's got a great cast there's tons of people in it and it's you know it's real like fun soderbergh you know i, so, I highly recommend it uh, would you put it as one of his better movies yeah i think so really? okay. although there's a lot of soderbergh movies and there's probably quite a few i haven't caught up with yet because he makes yeah. so many but um yeah I, i'd put it up in the upper tier of the stuff i like okay all right for sure. that's good that's high praise i like it yeah um on hbo max right yeah yeah okay all right um well next week we will be doing this again i think uh but it's tucker's pick because i picked last tucker oh. hasn't picked in a while if you want to gonna do something um have you guys done Cabin Boy? No. I think, no, Cabin Boy, I don't know about Cabin Boy. You don't know? You don't know about that being appropriate? Yeah. It's know. widely considered a stinker, but I fucking love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you done Rhinestone? There's yeah, nowhere no, to find it. No, you can't find Rhinestone. Can't you can't find, find it streaming no. anywhere. Yeah, it's on the list, but it's nowhere. Either way, we'll get if back you, to if you. If you ever fans. do get to that, yeah. I'm, oh, it'll I'm be an guy. episode. It'll be an episode for sure, okay. and we'll let you know. Um, enjoy your week, gang. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy that we're back and get to the chopper. Mm-hmm.